I've decided to rip out the old insulation, take off the drywall, put new insulation in there. The insulation I had in, I'll show you a picture of it, it's only an inch and a half thick and it was way dated. This is an R15 bat insulation, really dense, really tight pack and that goes into our stud cavity. Just to show you, this is three and a half inches thick, it's going to be compressed down nice and tight. It fits into this cavity, good tight fit and I'm going to Put the inso fast right on top so we get an R15 with an R8.5, an R23 plus a 1, 25, 26 R value wall system. Real nice, real tight, and a lot quieter than it used to be. So I am going to, again, I pre cut everything. So if you want to see how to cut and fit and, and do all this, there's a lot of videos for it. But this particular video is just to show you that we can go on top of wood frame construction. What we're going to be using is a three inch drywall screw. Why three inches? Well this is a two inch board and we're going to screw into the wood studs. We want to go into this recessed area so it's nice and flush. Now it's better to have a really fast drill gun instead of a slow torque battery operated drill gun because what we want to do is heat that plastic up so it'll suddenly start to bite. Now I'm only putting in six screws per panel. That's more than plenty for the light residential load that we're going to be putting on here, which is basically drywall and pictures. It's the only thing that's going to go on this wall, no cabinets. You could put nine screws in. But that gives you screw fastening 12 inches on center. And your drywall is going to attach to this. Again, it's real nice when you pre cut everything because it does go so much faster. Now this was an unusual piece. I actually had to cut the stud in half, almost right down the middle. It was kind of a rough and ugly cut. But it really doesn't matter. Because this is rough carpentry, not fine carpentry. This isn't finished work. This is rough work. And these awful looking areas are going to be wrapped around here with with drywall anyway, so that'll be hidden, and I'll spray foam and fill that in a little bit later. Sometimes to make these things fit, when these things are bent over, break them out, here's a big hole, spray foam and fill that, so it'll be a nice solid tight fit. Okay, now one of the things I want to do right now, air sealing up around here, I see a gap. Fill these chambers. Now it's okay to overfill these things because as you're going to come back and you're just going to razor blade and cut those off. Also going to do it down by the floor. Now this is only necessary because these are badly damaged. Part of what I did, it's a little unusual, because I had this funky area in here, and I'll show you what I mean. It's, I didn't quite have the right amount of pieces for it, so what I did is I cut two pieces to fit them together. So here are my two pieces. See, I have them fitting nice and tight. If I let go of them, they'll spring out. 
Now, spinning out like this, this happens a lot when we're just using adhesive. If you put it in too tight, the wall will have a tendency to push out. And you don't want that to happen. But when you're mechanically attaching it, it's no big deal. Because you can hold it down and in place. So you can have spring tension for your wall. All right, well, I'm going to finish screwing this up, which is a bad term. I think I should have said I'm going to finish putting the fasteners in the wall. Well, I believe that's it. I am going to do my, the rest of the air sealing, and I'll be done for the day.